I'm Ken Pienta. I'm the director of uh, research here at the Brady Urological Institute at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. And it was my pleasure to uh, work on this project with not only Jim Frost, who's going to introduce himself in a second, but also uh, our co-author, uh, Dr. Donald S. Coffey, who uh, was uh, certainly one of the icons in American medicine and cancer research, who unfortunately just passed away uh, last week uh, in the, after we had had this paper accepted uh, to OncoTarget. And he, he was very excited to uh, be the, the senior author on this paper. And unfortunately, we lost him. He passed away in his sleep uh, about a, uh, a week ago. And uh, so we know he's looking down on us, taking part in this interview. And Jim, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Jim Frost. Uh, I was uh, formerly a full-time professor in radiology here at Hopkins, specializing in molecular imaging. And I now run an advisory group for uh, use of molecular imaging and drug development and do di new diagnostics. And perhaps more importantly, in, in college and in my PhD work, I had a lot of exposure to physics and mathematics and including concepts of symmetry, which formed an important basis for the, for the research that we uh, conducted. And a lot of that was stimulated by conversations I had with Don Coffey on wide ranging subjects, including the mystery of symmetry and, and how it's so foundation for modern understanding of physics and mathematics, cosmology. So that was kind of a starting point for the current work. The reason we continue to have these sorts of discussions is that metastatic uh, cancer remains incurable. And we have a long tradition in the Brady of trying to understand and bring in new concepts from other fields to try and understand why cancer happens and how cancers form, really tumorigenesis. So we've done a, a wide range of uh, collaborations with people from game theorists to ecologists to evolutionary biologists uh, to mathematicians. And Jim has really uh, brought to us this idea of how do we not only use physics, but this how can we look at cancer in a new way? And, and this idea of symmetry and symmetry breaking is something that really hasn't been considered in, by cancer biologists at all. Uh, so we're, uh, Don and I were extremely excited to partner with Jim to sort of do this. Um, why don't you just go into symmetry a little bit and yeah. you know, why we think it applies to cancer? Right. And, you know, what Ken was talking about was, was also another big stimulus for me overlaying the, the concepts of symmetry, symmetry breaking with what cancer is and why it's so difficult as a problem to solve. And so coming into Ken's group uh, with, with his, uh, the people in his group was really very educational and taught me a lot about cancer and why it, it's so difficult to solve. So then taking the the example of how useful symmetry has been in physics and mathematics, uh, I started to ask the question, could that also be applied to, uh, to cancer as a state of broken symmetry beyond that of normal biology, which can be viewed as somewhere between perfect order and complete chaos and disorder. So it's in that intermediate realm. And then so then in the article, we looked into the question of whether cancer could be viewed as a state of further broken symmetry, which leads to the loss of uh, the homeostasis and other factors involved in the, uh, in the character of cancer. So what is symmetry? I mean, we, we understand what it is uh, from, from geometry. And at one, at one level, it could be that viewed as that which it stays the same when a change is made. So if you rotate a triangle uh, then by uh, 120 degrees, an equilateral triangle, you get the same triangle even though you've made a, made a change. So, and that turns out to be very fundamental for understanding the universe in general. Uh, it, 
chopping off the side of an apple is a type of symmetry breaking. And uh, so many of these factors, as we show in the article, can then be extended to cancer, particularly in the sense of cancer networks, protein networks, gene networks that are connections that involve, in, in the more fundamental sense, a graph of interconnections like the World Wide Web or the electrical grid. And it turns out that there is you know, body of knowledge showing that more asymmetric networks are more vulnerable to attack and have diminished stability. So in the article, we talk about how that can be folded into existing concepts of cancer at the at the system level to to understand how cancer evolves as a possible state of broken symmetry. And then more importantly, how we can potentially attack it at vulnerable points in the network that are more greatly broken symmetry. I think one of the things that um, we're fascinated by is that, for example, this is symmetric, right? No matter how you look at it, it's totally symmetric. And you can really say that this represents a cell. Um, no, all, all normal cells have an access point by which you can spin it, and it's symmet they're symmetric. So the same is very true of nuclei and other parts of the cell structure. But one of the things that fascinates us is that cancer is broken, and but it still functions. And it's hard to believe that a cancer cell is actually functional because it's so the sim it's got broken symmetry. And trying to understand that is really what we're trying to do in the paper. Similarly, if you look at DNA, you know, it's, it's symmetric. It's got a code that we all work. But cancer DNA is like this. It's crazy. And it's still functional. So we believe that, and what we were trying to do in the paper, and what Jim has taught us, is that symmetry is fundamental to understanding biologic structure. And the fact that cancer is broken symmetry, it not only needs to be understood, but we think will give us new ways to think about how to therapeutically target uh, cancer. We already use broken symmetry in diagnosis and prognosis. A pathologist looks at the slide and goes, that cell nuclear structure is abnormal and grades that. And we know that that has not only diagnostic, but prognostic information. It's not a far leap to say broken symmetry will help us understand function better as, and to target it. Right, yeah, and those, those, important, those are important points in the sort of the space of geometric symmetry breaking like Ken so nicely chose. But the article goes beyond that in, in terms of, say, information space and information asymmetry and functional asymmetry that is not strictly related to the geometry of the cell or the DNA, although in the article we talk about how they are definitely related. So we extend the concept beyond just geometric symmetry breaking to functional symmetry breaking and even something we call combinatorial symmetry breaking, which is related to the, the cancer network in, within itself, the microenvironment, communication really across the body, which can be viewed in terms of symmetry concepts. So we try and make it as foundational as possible and show how, with further research, we could uh, advance new understanding around cancer.